okay <clears throat> so let me try to even this out now at this point what I'm going to try to do is get the reed to rattle a lot or even crow let's see without removing any cane or bark from the rest of it okay and um, I mean I dare say try to get the reed to work as well as it can at this point right with removing nothing else and, and really push it strive for that and you will be surprised I mean because once the tip vibrates the way it should it's the rest of the reed is really not a problem you know it just kind of falls into place but if the tip isn't vibrating right uh, you're, you're kind of paddling upstream so as you can see I'm kind of staying away from the middle but I'm getting what I can here That yeah, looks pretty good. Yeah, can you see that all right? Yeah, kind of weird, huh? Let's see. There we go. And you can see the profile. As you can tell, I got to smooth that side out a little more. But you know, if you look at it through the light, you can just kind of see it through the light. Um, the tip's coming along. I'll try playing it. No, it's not bad. It's got a lot of rattle. I like that. Now, I'm going to try to get it to actually sound a C. Yeah. And, and to play. To actually play without removing cane or bark from the rest of it. Now, of course, it depends on what kind of cane you have. Um... You may not have very good cane. I know a lot of people, it seems like many people like this hard stuff. But, um, <clears throat> you know, I tried making some reads with it the other day, and it, it really doesn't sound good, and it doesn't play very well. I mean, you can make reads with them, but they're not very good. And I think what the kids today are doing... Are they, they're using wider shapes to compensate for bad cane and I don't know you lose what you lose is that the quality in the upper register you lose that focus uh, you know from G on up it just it, you know it's lacking it really lacks that singing quality all right let's see what we got mm. This looks pretty good. I don't know that I would go much further. So, I'll soak it a little more. And I'll clip it. As you can see, I don't know if you can see, but through the light, you know, you've got the beginnings of a tip. And it looks good in the sense that um, you know the proportionally is looks decent maybe a little long but I don't know what does this look like here yeah it's fairly smooth it comes off of the nothing dramatic you know you can see the profile of it also yeah so I'm just going to clip it until um, it kind of is not so ducky. It's got a weird kind of crow. Now, that reed will play. And if I stick it in the oboe, it'll work. It won't sound great, you know, but it'll work. Let's see what we got here. Wow. 
you know, in some countries that would be acceptable. Um, now what I would do is really soak it a lot, but because of time constraints, I'll continue on. I'll forge ahead. I'll show you what. I have a reed that's already soaked here in the next stage of development. All right. Yeah, maybe not. I'll tell you what. I'll stick with this one. This one's going to work better. Once I get it to this point, yeah, this side looks a little nicer. Um, I'm going to um, retouch the tip a little bit to thin the ends of it. Because yeah, when you clip, it makes the tip a little heavier and And like before, I kind of stay away from the middle because you know, people are different, you know. But the way I scrape, I tend to be kind of heavy handed, so um, take a lot off. Uh, I'll just do so like that. And like I said before, the goal now I'm working to blend a little more, huh? The goal is to get the reed to play well or sound well enough without really removing too much off the heart I'm really working this tip area and work the blend area and just try to get it to work at least work well and sound kind of nice yeah and um That'll make your life easier as you move down the assembly line. And as you can tell, I'm staying away from the middle quite a bit, and I'm kind of working the blend and the sides, yeah, and making, finishing off the end of the tip to get it nice and thin. Yeah. It's a lot of feel, hmm? And so you can see that's looking a little better. Hmm. Okay, now I'm going to try to even it up because it's not very well even. So we'll, we'll uh, that side looks decent. This side not so great. So I'll try to even it up. Yeah. It's usually the case with me is that I can make a read that looks good on one side, but then it looks awful on the other. And you know, you want to be as symmetrical as you can. And uh, yeah, if reads were one-sided, I'd, I'd do really well. But well, this side's all right. Now, probably want to play it, crow it. Yeah, let's see. So yeah, we thinned it out quite a bit, and uh, let's see if I can even this up. Uh, that's okay. Let's fix this a little bit. This is weird trying to scrape it like this, but at least the it's really close. You know, you can see really close, which is cool. Um, If you take a little bit off, it's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I think the trick is to get the end nice and thin. But don't press off the end. Let your knife just carefully take the cane off, right? Never force the issue. Oops. That's not good. Oopsie. Took a little bit there. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to clip it again until it gets down to about a C or so. And then I'm going to measure it. 
Huh, that's not bad. Now I think, I know this is going to look funny because it measures backwards, but actually the 8 is, pretend it's a 7, uh, and the 9 is a 6, uh, so that's like 71, you know, not bad. Uh, <coughs> clip it one more time so you can get the pitch a little higher, kind of flat. Okay, that's about a C. Now, of course, it's gotten thicker, right? So what we're going to try to do is maybe thin it a little bit, yeah. again, carefully, and then I'll remove some from the heart. And I think in order to judge this, you know, people, you might ask, okay, well, when do I start removing from the heart? And I would say, when you get around 70 millimeters you can. Okay? It's a rule of thumb. And it depends, you know, sometimes the cane will, will help you and sometimes it won't. But you're going to have to clip more anyway, because once you start removing from the heart, the pitch drops dramatically. Okay? Um, so, now what I'll do, I'll soak it a little bit. I like it to be very soaked at this point, but now what I'm going to do is start removing from the heart. The pitch is going to drop dramatically, right? And the heart is a very sensitive place. You have to be careful when you work around that area because if you take too much, um, you're going to run into trouble. Okay. So don't go too far too soon, because the next day you won't have anything. I mean, this reed will be just gone. And of course, this is really weird. I'm do this. Right. Maybe ten dozen scrapes right down the channels, huh? That's not. We're not curing cancer here. We're just trying to. Remove some bark. Mm. Okay. And it doesn't scrapes. And then here, I just go right down the channels. I don't spend, you know, this is just to get the reed to, to a certain point. And, uh, I kind of stay away from the middle but you know you got to remove the bark that's for sure certain off the heart it's, it's got to be gone and just do it lightly okay now let's see this will be very much different beast yeah so I'm gonna squeeze this a little bit Squeezing helps shut it down a bit, you know, it's not so crazy. Now you want to clip it to it gets about a C, I think. Let's try that thread facing up. And this is really awkward. And, uh, let's see, one more. See, it's not that C is elusive right now because we took bark off. So that's close to a C. And now you're going to have to redefine the tip because the reed becomes a different animal at this point because you're you're removing a lot of the strength. And uh, I guess you, it's almost as if you are substituting you know, strength. Okay. But I would get the reed to play as well as you can.